Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast, the first and longest running female hosted hunting podcast. She thinks at the end of the day your feet should be dirty, that your hair should be messy, and your eyes should be sparkling from the joy of camping. But first, she's ready to help you navigate your trip of a lifetime. And now, here's your hostess, Carrie Zilka. Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast. I am your hostess, Carrie Z. This week, I have not one, but two guests on the show. Introducing for the first time, my man, Aaron Lane, fellow Navy veteran, and also professional angler, Mike Hooker, who we met through the Take Event, Take a Vet Fishing event. But before we get to that, I would just re- like to remind you that Spy Point is the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast premier sponsor. Super excited about the next, the very next episode, actually. We'll have Trent Marsh on. We'll talk about the Flex Camera. We'll talk about Ireland. We'll talk about all sorts of fishing trips that never was. This episode is also brought to you by Montana Decoy. As you know, I think I've mentioned it about a thousand times, I literally won't use any other decoys. They fold up and they fit into my pack, and I still to this day think that's super fantastic. Now, business done on to fishing in Wisconsin and the Take a Bet fishing event. So, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hi, Hunt for Thanks Travel. For <laughs> so, well, let's start. Um, let's start with Mike first. Why don't you give the listeners a brief introduction on you and your background as far as fishing goes? Okay, so I'm Mike Hucker. Um, 33 years old, turning 34 here pretty soon. And I have been doing outdoor activities since I was in diapers. Like I grew up ice fishing on the weekends in a playpen in diapers. Oh my God. <laughs> for real? Like for real, for real? Yep. Yep. hundred <laughs> percent. We'd go out on the ice Friday night and not leave until Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon when I had to go back home. That's hilarious. So big hunting and fishing family, I take it. Yeah, and all our friends and, well, at the time, all my dad's friends and that, they all had kids my age, so they actually had an 8x16 shack with carpet and windows and heat in it with a bunch of playpens set up, and they called it their nursery. Oh, my God, that's great. <laughs> that is great. <clears throat> so tell us how you became a professional angler. Like, how did that all start? Well, we'll use that term loosely, but... <laughs> um. Uh, just growing up back in, well, just being a kid out on the on the ice fishing with my dad, we'd enter derbies and everything, and I'd fish them, and then we'd enter a couple open water tournaments, and I'd fish that, and I wouldn't say we ever made a killing. I mean, we caught great fish and placed a couple good spots. It was more of a, a camaraderie between everybody, so then I just involved in being able to buy my own, my first boat and getting my driver's license and getting off of school and flying as fast as I can home so I could hit the duck blind with my dad before and get 45 minutes in a shooting or something. Or we try to get some walleyes in the evening before it got dark. And there's sometimes I'd go goose hunting before school if I had enough time. <laughs> or awesome. go down to the dock and cast a pole. And then it just involved in the fishing some more serious tournaments. Um, I did some guiding for a little bit in Nebraska and as much as you would think that'd be a dream job, it was definitely not for me. I hardly had any time to get in the woods myself, but it was a bucket list item I wanted to check off. And then just recently I started getting into the tournament pretty decent. Um, I had a really good ice league season. Uh, not so much a a good walleye season this year. It, it kind of getting my butt kicked out there, but it's still a good time. Looking forward to the fall bite and hunting season coming up here pretty quick. I'm actually leaving for Kentucky tomorrow. Oh wow! For fishing and some well, hanging stands. Fun. Well, for deer hunting, getting trail cameras out and stands, but I'm got the poles packed too, so I could cast if I find a pond or a river. That's right. I forgot you. You bought land in Kentucky. Your home residence is in Wisconsin. You bought land in Kentucky. And remind me again, are you planning on moving down there permanently? Uh, 
Well, we haven't bought land yet. We're in the process oh. of the early phases of that. But I have a, a really good friend that lives down in Kentucky that I hunt down there with him. Okay. Okay. Um, but no, I don't have intentions of moving down there. But when we do buy property, it's going to be a a vacation place for us. Nice. Give my kids something forward to something to look forward to a place to go and grow some roots like I had growing up uh, fishing up in my grandparents' cabin. I actually just got back from up there last weekend and it brought back a lot of memories fishing that water. And that's something that I want for my kids. Very cool. Very, very cool. And so now we will turn our attention to Mr. Aaron Lane, who I might have mentioned about a bazillion times on the show. So, no way. Yeah, really. So why don't you tell them your background as a Navy veteran, and um, this was your second take event fishing, right? It was. It okay. was my second take event fishing. Do we have a? Do you have enough time for that? You know, I, I no. can. You know, I can wa- talk for days. I can edit. Days. All right. <laughs> Uh, hi, Hunt Fish Travel. My name is Aaron. Uh, I am Carrie's man of the hour and of many hours. Um, I'm a Navy veteran from 2001 to 2008. I was Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Um, come home. I've been fishing since I was a little kid. We used to fish at the dock. We used to hang out in Laurel Lake back in Lee, Massachusetts and catch trout by the by the dam. That was always a lot of fun. Um this is my second take event fishing event, and it was actually a lot of fun. Last year was uh, my first with Tom Harrington was my guide last year. It was a lot of fun. We were killing fish all day, all day long. I was pulling in, <laughs> pulling in pike left and right. This year, got nothing. I got skunked this year and uh, made made a fool out of my girlfriend. But <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And uh, Mike was Mike was definitely helping that 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 game time and you know. Getting her the top waters with all the <laughs> small mouth, and we didn't know where to fish. We were just having a good time, just talking. And he was uh, my guy this year was a former marine, and he was just he was just a um, an admin marine as he liked to call it, pineapple marine <laughs> or Hollywood marine. That's right. He was out in California, but he had a good time taking me fishing. I enjoyed his company, and uh, it was a great time. A lot of times you don't get veterans guiding, so. Let's back up a little bit and explain to the listeners what the take event fishing, take event fishing event even is. So, you know, I tried to get Jay on the on the phone, but he is where is he? I forget what he said he was doing. He is um he was just leaving for the airport yesterday. He's filming. He's putting the he does these documentaries, and today actually he was filming with a 98 year old World War II veteran in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then, I mean, he's just always on the go. So getting him on the on the phone to do an interview was damn near impossible. But he promised me that at the end of July when he was back, he would come on for half an hour to talk a little more in depth. So I apologize if I'm not doing the Take a Bet Fishing Organization justice. But their slogan is a day of giving back. They have a really great mission. You can go to takeabetfishing.org and read about it. They dedicate several hours to veterans getting them out on the water taking them fishing for a couple of hours and then they have a big ceremony and they have food and it's just a really good case of camaraderie you know you guys know i've talked about the other organizations that i do events with but take event fishing was the very first veteran related event that i'd ever participated in back in 2014 and it really 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 meant a lot to me so this was my fifth year which was pretty cool so a lot of times you don't hear about veterans um, guiding, it's a lot of times it's civilian folks donating their time, donating their gas, donating their boat, and taking us veterans out as a way of saying thank you, which is always kind of awkward for me, but whatever. <laughs> like, which, <laughs> which, Mike, you are not a veteran, correct? I am not, no. Yeah. So as a non-veteran, what? why did you decide to donate your time to an event like this? Uh, well, I have service members run in my family my great uncles my grandpa my uncle um it's just something i never i never did um but we really wouldn't be where we are today without our veterans yeah you know so any chance that i could help to give back is just great and 
it's just phenomenal being able to be a part of it. The stories you're told, uh, just seeing everybody together in one spot and all the smiles on everybody's faces and listening to everybody's other people's stories that you don't even don't even have on your boat, but everybody's just there for a common theme and it's just a great atmosphere. That's cool. This year we had six female veterans, which is the most that we've ever had in this event. And I forget how many, how many veterans it was. It was like 80 veterans and 50 boats or something like that. It was a lot. It was a lot of people, but some of those female veterans were also going back to Vietnam, which was crazy. Yeah, I know. Which is absolutely crazy. I know. Yeah, it was pretty cool to see because I think, I think in 2014 there was only other one other lady. So, I don't know, that was pretty cool. And they had a guide, they had a 16-year-old guide. He It was his boat, but he couldn't guide without a parent there, so his mom was with him. So that was pretty cool, too. I don't know, it was just a really great time. The event was held on Lake Wabisa J- June 11th, and they, if you are a veteran listening to this, no joke, anywhere in the country, too. We had a an event down in Florida this year, which was really cool. I think next year we might be going, too. We'll see. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but August 13th is Minnesota. August and I'll be there. Are you going to be in Minnesota? I'm making the six-and-a-half-hour drive up there to guide. Aw, that's cool. Mike, didn't you also guide one the weekend before in Illinois, right? It was like the month before, but, yeah, that was the very first event I ever did. And right. I immediately got hooked and fell in love with it, so I signed up for the Madison one. Oh, that's uh, cool. And drove two and a half hours for that event and then drove home afterwards and talked to the wife, and she sees how much fun I have doing it and told her that I wanted to go do this one too. And she was all for it, so I signed up, and my buddy also – I had several buddies fish the Illinois one because we're all a tight group community down here. But then uh, a guy that I work with, Justin Engel King, uh, he works for me, but he also did the Illinois event, and he traveled to Madison with me. And we are also sharing a room in Minnesota together because he's driving up there as well. That's so cool of you guys. As, as someone and who's I have, participated, I cannot thank you guys enough. It It really does mean a lot to us. You know, it, we wouldn't have an event like this if it wasn't for people like yeah. you. It's, it's crazy because of the fact that it's just – you know, I've always told Carrie to embrace being a veteran because it's just something we've we've that we've done and just embrace it because it's a part of our life, you know. But people like you, Mike, and your friends that come out just to take us fishing because you want to, because it makes you feel good and you like to fish, that means a lot to all of us veterans, you know. It does. Like a 110 percent, a lot. I can't say thank you enough to the people that take us out. It's crazy how yeah. these people just volunteer for it. Well, in the first year or two, like. We they were struggling to get people to volunteer boats. We had more veterans. I think the first or second year that we were in, um, oh, I, think, I forget how many veterans it was, but it was like five to a boat. We crammed in there or four to. I think we had four of us. Well, plus the guide on one boat. So I mean, it's really grown, and I think the word is getting out, and it's just it's a really 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 good event. So I just love it. This year was a lot better. I believe. Last year was like baking 100 degrees out in that boat. We got sunburned like crazy. Yeah. I believe I'm fishing the October 8th one in Eagle River as well. Are you? I was going to ask. Yeah. So, okay. So, wait. There are, let's see, two in Minnesota, August 13th and August 14th. There is one September 17th in Minnesota. And then Wisconsin has October 8th, which is Eagle River, which... If you're a musky hunter, you will probably be very excited for that one. <laughs> so. If I had more vacation time, Mike, we'd definitely come up and join you on the, the, the October 8th one. I know. Um, that, be cool. I was talking to a gentleman up there in Madison that uh, this year was their first year that they did over in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And I guess they really struggled with getting guides out there because uh, most of the guides out there fished the big pond. Oh, yeah. And sure. I've I believe a lot of the veterans up there like live off grid, don't want to be bothered, didn't even have email addresses to sign up. So they were creating emails for them just so they could get signed up for the event. And I believe they really struggled with guides. Um, mm-hmm. So I have every intention of traveling out to Michigan next year to do that. And if 
any of your listeners live in Michigan or close to Michigan that would love to do that. I know they really could use the help out there. That's good to know. I've got a quite a few. Up North Journal is based out of Saginaw, yep. Michigan, so I'll mention it to them. I'm sure they can put the word out, too, and help for next year. Um, they might know a few people with boats. Just, just a few? Just a few. So, <laughs> Just a few. So, yeah, that's good to know. It it's just it is really interesting watching this organization grow. Like I said, from an, a participant standpoint, usually I'm always behind the scenes helping organize things, and this is one of the few things that I've actually been able to participate as a non-organizer or a non-photographer or whatever it is. So it's I think it's a really cool it's a, such a cool event. It's a cool organization. When my dad passed away um, two years ago. Um, we did the donation to take a bet fishing. So, and I was very, very touched at how many people donated so many dollars. I thought that was so cool. He was a Navy veteran, so I mean, <laughs> so, well, cool. So it's okay. so much fun. I mean, I know the pressure's not well. The pressure's on to catch fish. I know that's not why everybody's there. It's just a day on the water, and everybody's extremely happy with that. But. Even so, as a guy, the pressure's on the catch fish. Sure. Like when we when we started off on the on the rock pile, and I had high hopes for that spot. I was going to plan on that spot all day long, and that's where I was going to stay. But in the first half hour, when we weren't even getting a hit, I knew we had to change something up. And that's when we decided to go top water and go shallow. And I guess another driving factor to that was. Aaron talking up last year how well he did and <laughs> beating you and that just that brought out the competitive side of me and I was like all right that's game time yeah for the listeners last year so Aaron and I always have like a house divided you always have um the Packers versus the Bears and we have West Coast Navy versus East Coast Navy in this house so it's always kind of a fun for a little friendly competition, and he whooped me last year. I put a hurt on her Navy last year. My God. West Coast Pineapple Navy won last year. Corporate Navy got just skunked. This year, however, Mike and I, we brought the heat. We caught a ton of fish, like a ton of bass, and it was just so fun. Remind me again what we were using for lures. Uh, I believe the only thing besides the scum frog that I casted a couple times, we were just using the storm chuck bug. I, and, we and use the same ones like constantly and just for hammering them. Yeah, we work the shore and then we try another spot and it wasn't happening. We just go right back and work through the same area again and started catching them again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a lot. Of fun. I mean, we were fishing. They were hitting in a foot of water and they're striking at it two, three, four times sometimes before they'd finally get it in their mouth. Yeah. Well, and last year compared to this year, the weather was completely different. Last year was like what? Oh. Nine, like it was like freaking ninety degrees or something. It's nine thousand degrees on that so lake. So hot, I got so sunburned despite my ninety thousand SPF that I constantly put on. It was so hot last year. It was year. crazy hot. This we year couldn't even cool. we couldn't ask for a better day this year. Yeah, this year was amazing. Totally overcast and the the storms held out until we got off the water and after the whole the whole kit and caboodle was done, we're like, okay, it's time to get out of here because we're gonna get stormed on and and sure sure did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it stayed clear for the ceremony and everything. And I think I hit rain like an hour from Madison when yeah. I finally hit the first rain drop. So it worked out great. It really did. Which is actually kind of funny because last year during the take event uh, fishing event, Carrie and I decided I'm going to take the bike and we're going to camp. So Carrie had all the camping gear in the Jeep, and I'm on the bike and we're rolling out towards McFarland. And we got caught in this massive downpour storm, like straight up, like sheets of water, like monsoon. So I pulled over, put my rain suit on, and we looked at the radar, and it was just, it was like forever. It seemed like it was going to just carry forever. So we ended up turning around, coming back home, because I was soaked and unhappy. Um, and we got home, and we just chilled the night and then drove out in the morning. But when we got to McFarland, we talked to the guys, like, yeah, it didn't even drop, it didn't even rain a drop out here. So if we had pushed on, it would have been okay, but it was just nuts. I was like, nope, I'm not riding in this anymore. I was soaked, and I was mad, mm-hmm. so we went home. Yeah. Yeah, last year sucked. <laughs> There's something what? about you catching your first fish that just took, like, all the stress away and the relief. Like, all right, now it's on. 
Yeah, I the pressure's bet. off. You caught a fish, and we we're having a good time regardless. But now that we know we caught a fish, and then I think within five minutes of going to that other lake, we caught a bass and a northern, or caught a bass and had another hit. Mm-hmm. And I knew that's where we needed to be, so we called Justin. And I was like, "Hey, Justin, you need to bring your guy up here. They're slamming top waters." Yeah. And he ran up there, and they started catching fish too, because they were sitting on the rock pile. I think they got one crappie in an hour and a half that they were sitting there. So let me ask you, Mike, as a guide, you know, you've never fished uh, that lake before, right? Never fished it. Okay, so how much pressure do you feel putting somebody on your boat? And I'm just curious, out of curiosity, how much pressure do you feel putting some a veteran on your boat, giving giving him his or her, her the rod, and saying, okay, let's go fishing? What kind of pressure do you feel? Is, is it a lot of pressure on you as a as you know a professional angler? You know, do you feel like you have to well, go out and throw it down and like catch the most fish? Is there a lot of pressure? I don't feel like I need to go out and catch the most fish, and I really shouldn't even be feeling pressure at all because I know it's just about a day of giving back and just being on the water and having the good conversations and laughs. And I know it's, I know that's enough, and just catching fish is a bonus. But the uh, be able to go to a new lake you never fished before you know nothing about you looked at maps and i did reach out to one of my groups and just asked a couple people who fished that lake before and they did give me a couple pointers on where to try and i just took it to heart and once we having the discipline to move off of something and try something is huge because I could have sat on that rock pile all day long anchored and we could have just talked and had a good conversation and wetted lines, but knowing that it wasn't working and we needed to try something. So we moved and just gave it a shot and it worked, but there shouldn't be any pressure, but the pressure is there. And like I said, once when Carrie caught that first fish, it was just gone, (laughs) completely gone. And then we just had, we were having a blast to begin with, but we really loosened up and had a blast after that, after the fish started biting. Yeah, for sure. I've been, there have been years where, well, actually, I've even, like, paid guides and gone out, paid, you know, the $200 or whatever, and all I did was just watch the guide catch fish while I didn't. And, because he's like, here, I need you to cast over here, but wait, let me check it out, and then he would do it for, like, 40 minutes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> But there was I think I even asked you if you I think I even asked you, sorry to interrupt, if you wanted to reel the first fish in that I, I know. I'm like, you want to reel it in? I know. <laughs> and it's funny because my guy this year, he uh Paul he was so much fun. Paul is a great guy. He's never fished that lake before. And you know, I fished it last year and I kinda remember a few spots we tried where just nothing, nothing, nothing was happening. And then Carrie started sending over pictures of the amazing fish you guys were catching. I'm like, it's game on. And then he caught this nice little walleye, and he's like, "Oh, you could say you caught it." I'm like, "Nah, man." I don't. Know. I it was like, he was like, "I'm sorry, we're not catching any fish." I'm like, "Dude, it doesn't matter. It's just, yeah. it's getting out on the lake, you know, and just having a good time with somebody that you know." He was asking me questions, and I'm sure you and Carrie had a conversation too. And it's like, yeah, you go out, you have a good time, you know. And one of my fondest memories of being out on this lake is like watching this this Vietnam veteran who's in a wheelchair. Wants to go fishing. This dude pulls up in his pontoon boat, says, get out, man, we're going fishing. Gets that guy in, gets him hunkered down, tied down. His assistant gets on there, and they take him out. That's what's important. It's not about the biggest fish. It's not about catching that massive muskie at the bottom of the lake. It's about getting out there with people that appreciate what you've done and where you've been with your life and are willing to hear your stories. Because I've got stories for days, and I could talk for hours. Legit. Days, days months. and hours. You could probably talk straight for like thirty days. If I if I were to tell you about my whole deployment <laughs> cycle kidding. from two thousand two to two thousand four, you'd be like, all right, dude, we're like two weeks deep. Because I have the, a memory like a, a trap, but I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. So. But it's good when you're caught, stuck on a boat and they can't get away from you. They have to listen to your stories. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I think if I recall, Carrie and I really didn't even talk about the service that much. No, it was we just didn't. more our hobbies and outdoors and. Yeah. We talked about the podcast a lot, and that, just stuff like, you know, industry stuff, which was pretty cool. I don't get to talk about that a lot. No, you don't, really. So. And even for the first event I did, we really, like, it came up a little bit in conversation, but it's not something we were dwelled on. We just let the conversations take us where it wanted to go. Sure, absolutely. Well, because some veterans don't want to talk about it, like, and they're really funny about I, it, like... 
Yep, those are some guys that just yeah. won't say nothing about us. You just talk to them. Mm-hmm. If you just get on that level with that person, it's just like a regular conversation you have at a grocery store with somebody checking out line reading the National Enquirer. <laughs> you know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Well, I I think I'm gaining a reputation in the take of that because the last two events that I've done, which are my first two events, uh, I brought women out. And it's That's great. That's right. Oh, Tell yeah, us about, about la- the last one that you took out. What was her name? Nicole. Nicole. And she had a good time, you said, right? Oh, we had a blast. That's awesome. And I think the best part about this is is it's not just like a one and done thing. Like we're still in contact. We talk, share pictures. Um, you guys are welcome to be on my boat anytime again. And that's the same thing with Nicole and her nephews actually in boot camp right now. So when, and he loves to fish. So when he comes back, I'm going to be taking them out fishing again. And awesome. I mean, it's, you're, it's not just an event and done. We're making friends. Yeah. In for the sure. Castle. Oh yeah. David Van Dorn, who I was with last year. He's that guy's awesome. He's amazing. He's just such a, and he's become a good friend. Like he's just such a good guy. And he's just, he's the one, if you ever go to the events, he's the one with the take a bet fishing wrapped boat. He is that dedicated and to his this truck. organization. And yeah. Oh yeah. And his truck too. Yep. But he, and he just, was in a video game. Oh yeah. I love telling people that he was, was in a, the Sims. He was, he was a video game fisherman <laughs> I was like, too. I'm on a boat with a guy who was in a video game last year. It was pretty funny, but he's just such a nice guy. <laughs> Carrie told me that last year. She's <laughs> like, like, yeah, times. my guy was on a, a video game. I'm like, what kind of advantage is that? That's some garbage right there. What? What is going on? I told, I looked at my guy, Tom. I said, hey, we got a video game fisherman over there. If he's in a video game, he's got to be good. We got to school these guys. We did. And he did. Thanks for reminding me. So anyway, like, but yeah, no, seriously, some of the friendships that have come out of this, these events are just amazing. So, well, cool. Well, guys, we are bumping up against time. So if the listeners want to learn more about you, Mike, where can they go to find out about you and your the stuff you're doing with your angling and everything? Uh, I pretty much just have my Facebook page. Okay. Um, I have an Instagram account, but I'm really not uh... – I'm trying to get away from all the social media stuff right now. You and me both uh, are. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, it's very difficult. It, it's very difficult. I'm just trying to spend less and less time on it and more time out on the water and in the woods with my kids and yeah. family and having a good time. But uh, I am on Facebook and Instagram. All right. And you, Aaron? <laughs> uh, yeah, if you guys want to find out more about me, you can – which isn't really much. You can just go on <laughs> my Facebook page or, you know, check out Aces High on Facebook. That's my band, the only Iron Maiden true band in Wisconsin. Yep. We're the number one, baby. Number one in your hearts, number one in your phone books, A.A. Ron. So, uh, yeah, next year also, too, keep on the lookout for a redo of this of this interview because Carrie's going to be guiding next year, and I'm going to jump on the boat with Mike. We're going to see yeah. we're gonna see who's the champ of all champs on this one. I know. I bought a big girl boat. She bought a big yeah, I wish boat. I would have known that it was going to be the duel of you guys coming up because it could have all fished on my boat. I know. That would have been a lot of fun. I oh, just man. limited it to one person on my boat so I could have a more personal experience with the person I have with me instead of having a couple people, and which I'm sure yeah. would be just fine. Yeah. But That's right. I like to be able to just focus my attention. But if I knew you guys are – coming up i would have definitely put both on the boat <laughs> that's okay i am looking forward to the competition next year because <laughs> <know, right? laughs> right? now it's going to be like all of us in on it <laughs> so all right well gentlemen thank you so much for coming on the show um thanks for having me this is my first podcast Oh, really? It's super fun. It's super easy. Oh, yeah. Everybody's always like, oh, I don't know. I'm on the sound. I'm really nervous or whatever. I'm like, it's literally we're just having a conversation about stuff we love to talk about anyway. Yeah, you might as well let other people hear it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So. This is my second interview with Carrie <laughs> and uh, first time on Hunt Fish Travel. Yeah. So doing some content creation for her now, it ought to be interesting. I'll be on here a little bit more. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. All right. That's great. And for the listeners, thank you, as always, for taking the time out of your busy day to 
tune in to the Huntfish Travel Podcast. If you're listening to this on the website, huntfishtravel.com or on Facebook, please, please, please go to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere you can listen to podcasts and subscribe there. That is the best and easiest way to keep up on the content that I publish. I have a ton of really interesting episodes coming up. We've got Brett Amundsen. We're talking about snow goose hunting. We've got Trent Marsh talking about the new Flex camera with with spy point trail cameras which i'm super excited about and if i try to explain it i'm gonna mess it all up so just tune into that episode so you can learn about the newest latest and greatest tech in spy point we have who else i have sean knoblock the hometown heroes outdoors um drawing a blank here i have so many episodes coming up you guys just for real go to whatever podcast player you listen to podcasts on and subscribe because we have just amazing episodes come up Facebook.com, Hunt Fish Travel. Instagram is still, as as mentioned before, Instagram.com slash Carrie Zilka, C-A-R-R-I-E-Z-Y-L-K-A. And, of course, Twitter is Twitter.com slash Hunt Fish Travel. And, again, thank you for listening.